GAC. <laughs> Anyways, if we can get approval for that, everyone, it has been distributed already. Wonderful, thank you very much. Number two, the one that never goes away, keeps coming back into its third parliament, the shipbuilding study. Now this is not to, um, for us to, or for it getting approved to do it, this is to approve the budget to send to the liaison committee to try again. Had been approved in the past by the House. Last time we sent in was not approved, so we are trying to gain travel if necessary, but not necessary travel. Uh, the idea is uh, an east, one trip east, one trip west, the west one being Vancouver, Victoria to C-SPAN and the Victoria Shipyard. East, of course, would be to Quebec City to Davie and Halifax or Irving. So we have distributed uh, the budgets. So if we can just get approval to send to Leah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, a couple of things for next week. Uh, May 27th, we're doing the red tape, the one that we rescheduled. If you recall, we had one set up. We had to uh, bump them, so that will be on Monday. May 29th, we have agreement. We're doing the main estimates. We'll have uh, Minister Duclos here and Minister Anand, 4.30 to 6.30. I'm not sure of one with, who's going to do 4.30 to 5.30 and 5.30 to 6.30. And then 6.30 to 8.30, we're continuing the Canada Post study with the President of Canada Post, just to keep Mr. Backrack happy. So I apologize, everyone. It is going to be a long meeting, um, but that is next Wednesday. Sorry, the next Wednesday. First two hours is going to be the main estimate. Yep. And? First two hours. The main estimate. Yes. And then you said? And then 6.30 to 8.30 is the President of Canada Post. Okay. And unfortunately, we have to do it like this because it's the only day that the ministers and the President of Canada Post stated that they would agree to attend. So if they had agreed to do different dates, then we would not be sitting for four hours, but this is literally the only day that they would agree to. So in order to do so, we're going to bake it a long day. I had Mr. Baines first, but let me just... Uh, Go through quickly. And then on June 3rd, if you recall, we agreed that we'd have the officials in for the main or for PSPC and TBS for the main estimates. So on that date, instead of them being here, for example, two hours with Minister Anand, with one hour with the minister, one hour with the officials, they're going to appear separately, and that would be June 3rd for the main estimates. And then finishing out the month will be filled in with, we have um, supplementary A's coming out soon. And then we'll have, obviously, our usual Canada Post, red tape, and other stuff. But we'll fill that in once we get the subs. I had Mr. Baines on the schedule, or what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not sure I heard a timeline or estimated date on the shipbuilding piece. Uh, the... What the committee agreed to a long time ago that would be summer travel. Again, that's if it gets past Leah and if it gets approved by the House and then approved by the parties. So big if, if, ifs, but this is the first step. I will say in there is some um, uh, uh, completion dates in August that are taking place at the C-SPAN in Vancouver shipyard with uh, a couple of the ships, so. I've been speaking to uh, several of the shipyards. They're very anxious to have us not out. <laughs> no, they've seemed uh, quite uh, anxious to have us out. And it is the largest purchase in the government of Canada history, but again, it's... Uh, in, the, in the end, it's not up to us. In the end, it's not up to us around the table. Uh, Mr. Backrick, on the schedule? I just I didn't hear uh, clarity on the point when the two ministers show up to talk about estimates. Are they concurrent or sequential? Sequential. sequential. One yeah. hour each. Yeah. Okay. I'm gotcha. I'm not sure if it's Mr. Anand then Minister Duclos. The Do? Oh, so it'll be Minister Minister Duclos first, and then Minister Anand. They'll have their usual officials with them, 
but the second hour we normally do solely the officials. We will do that June 3rd. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I heard June 3rd. Is June 5th programmed? Uh, at this time, no. Thank you. I'm waiting to see what's uh, coming out with the SUPs. SUP A's. We'll go from there. So that is our schedule coming up. I have Mrs. Block and then I have Mr. Kuzmirchuk. Uh, and we've got about 22 minutes. Mrs. Block. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair. End up first, though, Mr. Chair, if I'm not mistaken. Mrs. Block caught my eye first. So and Mrs. Block, then yourself, Mr. Kuzmirchuk. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would like to move the following motion that in relation to its study of the arrive can application min Doan be ordered to appear before the committee for three hours at a date and time to be fixed by the chair but no later than june 7th 2024 provided that a mr Doan be offered all the accommodations which had been offered to christian firth and B, if Mr. Dawn does not appear as ordered, the, chief be, the chair be directed to report the material facts of the matter to the House forthwith. Really briefly, Mr. Chair, um, if you all will recall, um, Mr. Doan had appeared before the committee. Um, shortly after he appeared, Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano provided testimony that caused us as a committee to, to agree unanimously that he be called back and then finally there was an article that came out in January around the um, uh, I think uh, getting rid of data files moving them around and deleting them that further caused us to want to hear from Mr. Joanne so I'll leave it there Mr. Chair and throw it open for any other comments I have uh, Mrs. Kusi Mrs. McNola did you have a hand up yeah, okay, Ms. Mrs. Cousy, and then Mrs. Vignola. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think it goes without saying that I support the motion as put forward by my colleague. As of January 24th, 20, 2024, um, Mr. Doan has been on medical <coughs> leave. This was the time where he first where we first received the uh, document, the letter from his lawyer indicating that um, he was on this medical leave and public servants can take a maximum of 27 unpaid sick weeks, uh, but this time is coming to a close. Um, I think that this committee has shown Mr. Doan a, a uh, significant amount of, of compassion and has been respectful of of his needs and of this time he has needed to uh, to heal to reflect upon the case at hand but the reality is that he is significantly implicated within the arrive scam scandal first of all of course from the point of incompetence whereby he was uh, simply unable to explain to this group why he was so unaware as to the lack of project management the lack of documentation, and of course, the the question that has plagued this committee, who chose GC strategies? So this is just an incredible amount of incompetence. But more importantly, Mr. Chair, from the position that his his really his actions really would reflect that of uh, those of not having been ethical. First of all, in potentially lying to this committee. First of all, relative to the selection of GC strategies, he had indicated that his team had chosen GC strategies, whereas his subordinates, both Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano, were adamant that it was he himself who had made the selection of GC strategies. And second, relative to his promotion, he had indicated that he had gone through a significant uh, competition relative to receiving his position at Treasury Board. Anyone who has been through a public service substantive process uh, can tell you uh, it is not something that is taken lightly and that there are many steps, much preparation and effort to receive a substantive role within the public service and certainly one of that significance. Um, but his, his uh, colleagues, again, countered what he said and in fact he in his testimony uh, to our former NDP colleague here and and myself uh, gave 
differing information that he had in fact not received the position as a result of a substantive process but was chosen from it. Of course as well we have the issue of him uttering threats, uttering threats to Mr. McDonald uh, after Mr. Doan supposedly received a call from the then uh, Minister of Public Safety, uh, Mr. Mendicino, who I will add has not yet appeared at this committee and should have appeared at this committee by now relative to uh, a rise scam, but that uh, he, he apparently, according to Mr. McDonald, called Mr. McDonald at that time and threatened Mr. McDonald's career. So he has to come forward and account for that. This is just, this is not to be taken lightly, uttering threats such as this. And of course, as my colleague Ms. Mrs. Block had pointed out, the deletion of thousands of emails. We've all certainly uh, deleted an email now and then in error. Um, something that even deleting a, a single email brings about uh, much stress, much uh, concern, but deleting thousands of emails, which explains many administrative gaps, in fact, Mr. Chair. Um, and, but he denies this as well. So it's just evident that Mr. Doan is a significant part of the Arrive Scam scandal. It, it is, he is a piece of the puzzle. And most importantly, Mr. Chair, he must be held accountable for both his incompetence and his, his, uh, his unethical behavior. There comes a time, Mr. Chair, where everyone has to pay the piper. And Mr. Doan's time has arrived. And therefore, I support Mrs. Block's motion and hope my colleagues will agree that it is long past the time Mr. Doen come before this committee and explain his actions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mrs. Vignola. Thank you very much, Chair. I agree with the facts that Mr. Doen and the evidence that we've heard at the committee and uh, told of Mr. Doan, Mr. McDonald, and Hugh Tano a bit contradictory. We are in a situation where we have a, a raft of uh, a testimony that is quite contradictory and needs to be clarified. Some will say that uh, they're trying to serve as uh, uh, scapegoats. It might be the argument that was proposed by others. And, the, you know, uh, everybody's just kicking the can down the road or trying to throw the ball in the other's court. Uh, Mr. Doan uh, purportedly is uh, uh, sort of medical difficulties. Uh, I, uh, I don't have any notion as to what it is, and I, uh, I might be completely uh, in the weeds on that. But I, what I'd like to stress is that it's important to have a comprehensive view to get some proper explanations, and if we can cast light on the situation we, we are neither we're neither judge nor jury we're there to improve processes and if there were malfeasance of some sort that does never repeat itself and that the uh, control or the safeguards should be improved to ensure that all officials can do their job in the public interest and not in their private gain. And uh, not, you know, we, we're encompassing all 300,000 uh, functionaries and bureaucrats in that, but it, uh, some wear the hat better than others. There's a line that one must, that was, must not be crossed that of a perception of a, a intimidation, bullying, threats, never, never. We serve as a, a, a model, an example of what uh, it should be. Now, we don't want to be seen to be crossing a line or accepting behavior that crosses the line. We are honorable members and we should be seen as honorable. 
And that's my concern. If he doesn't come because his uh, 27 days of medical leave, uh, and, uh, well, okay, so he could have uh, brought them forward. But, uh, you know, he might decide that he's sick and he's going to take uh, go, go unemployed and collect uh, some kind of uh, benefit. Are we going to be criticized for bringing a, a person who is ill uh, to uh, comply with an appearance? Uh, and uh, if that becomes routine, uh, how can it be exceptional? I mean, there's nothing exceptional about repeating the, you know what they say, keep repeating the same thing, expecting a different result. It doesn't work. So. Two years of uh, trying. So my concerns, questions I ask myself, what we have to reflect on. Yes, I do want to get some clarification. I want some answers to our questions. But uh, I, I don't. I, I won't be bullied by a bully. That's it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I, I'd like to move an amendment, uh, which is that we strike uh, or delete, remove uh, all of B uh, from uh, from the original uh, motion, and so that is uh, section B, which reads, if Mr. Doan does not appear as ordered, the chair be directed to report the material facts of the matter to the House forthwith, and if I can speak to that, I would, I would appreciate the opportunity. So it's just eliminating B? Are speaking list on the amendment? Are you going to speak on that? Oh, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Sorry, Chair. Sorry, you, you stopped, I thought. <laughs> go ahead. No, I just I wanted to say that, uh, you know, uh, we obviously as a committee have important questions to ask Mr. Doan. And uh, the next logical step uh, in this progression and in the investigation and the work of this committee is to hear directly from Mr. Doan. Uh, obviously, we're trying to be sensitive to the fact that there are some serious medical issues that uh, that have uh, come to light as well, too. Uh, but we do believe that uh, that is the next logical step is to hear directly from Mr. Doan. And so we support the motion to bring uh, Mr. Doan here to committee. I don't believe that uh, that Part B is necessary at this stage. I believe that let's take this step by step, uh, which is let's hear from Mr. Doan himself. Let's obviously communicate at the meeting what the repercussions are. Uh, if there isn't additional uh, cooperation, that can be clarified during the meeting. But I do believe that at this stage, let's take this step by step. The next logical step is to call him to this committee, but there is no uh, requirement at this point uh, to include Section B in this, uh, in this motion. And so I'd like that section to be uh, struck. At the same time, uh, we know that there is important work that Parliament is doing at this point. Uh, especially in, with in relation to uh, debating the budget and uh, debating important legislation. And we don't want to tie up the work of the House uh, that is uh, laser focused on those issues. And so again, we are supportive of uh, calling Mr. Doan to testify in front of this committee. Uh, we think that is the, log the logical next step, but I would ask that uh, Part B be stricken from that motion. Okay. Mr. Jenis on the amendment. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, in terms of the proposed amendment, uh, I think it's just important to, to be clear about the process. So uh, we're proposing that the committee order Mr. Doan to appear, uh, and it seems that there's agreement on that in principle, which is great. Uh, the question is, what if he doesn't appear? Now, I think if we have a clear consequence in there, which is that we would report on the matter to the House, that increases the chances that Mr. Doan will appear. So if we don't have Part B, the chances that the committee get simply blown off are much higher. With Part B in there, uh, I think almost certainly he will appear because we've already established that there is a path for, for a consequence. Uh, I don't think it's very likely that, that consequence will be triggered because... Uh, because with B in there, it's a clear message that, that, that he needs to appear. If B's out there, then it's ambiguous whether there would be any kind of follow-up next step. Um, but let's also be clear in terms of, of the nature of that process that would follow. Um, it's always up to the majority, right? Uh, it's uh, the, the reason Mr. Firth appeared before the bar was because uh, the majority, in fact, in that it, as the case was unanimously the House, 
agree to a motion to, to bring him before the bar. So the the outcomes are, are always going to be controlled by the majority. It's not up to us as, as one party to determine what the next the next step is. Um, but uh, but I, I do think B is valuable because uh, because it, it, it establishes what happens if Mr. Doan doesn't appear, and establishing that means he's much more likely to appear. Uh, there is if we if we if we pass this motion without Part B, uh, I think the chances are higher that uh, that he simply doesn't appear, and then we're back here all over again. So that's on that basis, uh, we we would suggest leaving B in and, and that the amendment not be supported. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. I see no one else, so we'll go to a vote. Mr. Clerk. On the yes, on the amendment. Ms. Atwin. In favor. Uh, Mr. Baines. Yes. Mr. Jawari. Yes. Mr. Kusmirchuk. Support. Mr. Souza. Yes. Uh, Ms. Block. No. No. Mr. Jenis. No. Ms. Cousy. Opposed. Madame Vignola. Oui. Uh, Mr. Backrack. Yes. So, yes, pour seven, set, nays count, trois, three. So the amendment passes, so we have uh, an amended motion, which is just the first part. And we wish to speak to it, or can we go to a vote on that? Looks like we're going to go to a vote. Okay. Ms. Adwin? In favor. Mr. Baines? Yes. Mr. Joari? Yes. Mr. Krosmichak? Yes. Mr. Souza? Yes. Ms. Block? Yes. Mr. Jenis? Yes. Ms. Cousy? In favor. Madame Vignola? Oui. Mr. Backrack? Yes. Yes, pour 10, 10, nays, count, 0, 0. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to go to Mr. Kusmirchuk, but keep in mind we've got about five minutes, so please speak fast. So I'd like to put a motion uh, forward, and it, the motion is the following, and it's going to be distributed as well uh, to, uh, to the clerk to distribute to the committee. And the motion is that given the recent media reports that Conservative Party of Canada members use taxpayer funds to benefit themselves, their spouses, and their staff by expensing hundreds of thousands of dollars to attend partisan events, the committee condemned the hypocrisy of Conservative members, flagrant disregard for taxpayer money, and demand a commitment to, see, to cease such practices. And I'm happy to speak to that motion. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Chris Mirchuk. You've got about four minutes. It's a, a point of uh, point of order I'd like to raise. Uh, um, I, I'd like uh, for you to maybe rule uh, whether or not this motion is in order. And if you'll bear with me, I, I do have a couple quick arguments I want to make with respect to whether or not it's in order. Uh, first of all, the mandate of the Government Operations Committee is to deal with uh, operational matters involving the Government of Canada. It sounds like Mr. Kuzmerichuk would like to have a discussion about uh, House of Commons operations. <laughs> We have a procedure in House Affairs Committee, which is responsible for dealing uh, with matters involving the uh, uh, procedures of the House of Commons. Uh, and uh, uh, for, for, from what I know, uh, the, the government is <laughs> trying to bring this up at, at multiple committees, um, which, is, which is a tactic I've never heard of being used before by any other members of this House. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but, uh, but, Mr. <laughs> but, 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 Mr. Chair, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I, uh, this isn't being recorded. Is it? <laughs> no, uh, so, so, uh, you know, but, but, Chair, uh, I, I'm, I appreciate the levity from other members, but in, in all seriousness, there, there, there are mandates, of course, that, that the standing orders do prescribe for specific committees. Uh, the, 
Government Operations Committee is responsible for government operations. Uh, we don't, of course, have an Opposition Operations Committee, but we do have a Procedure and House Affairs Committee uh, that is responsible for dealing with uh, matters related to procedure uh, and House uh, uh, affairs. Uh, we also have a Board of Internal Economy uh, that governs the rules of the House of Commons, uh, and it includes representation from all parties. Uh, the Board of Internal Economy is a place where the rules of the House are established and where uh, 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 if there is an allegation that rules of the House were broken. I don't think there is an allegation here that rules of the House were broken. There's maybe an allegation that the rules shouldn't be what they are. Uh, but uh, if, if members want to change rules or study rules as they relate to House of Commons activities, uh, then the Board of Internal Economy would, would uh, also be a place where uh, this matter could be, could be studied. Uh, but this committee does have a clear, specific mandate. It's looking at operations operations of government, we look at the activities of, of, uh, of Crown Corporation. So that's one uh, area in which I would appreciate you, Chair, uh, uh, reflecting on and ruling on whether or not this, this motion is in order. Um, secondly, there, there are rules around the use of parliamentary language in the House, in committees, and of course in motions that have been put, uh, put forward. Um, and uh, I would also suggest that, um, although of course we do criticize each other from time to time in the context of parliamentary committees, uh, that there are certain words we cannot use. Uh, members aren't able to accuse each other of lying. They're not able to um, to cast other kinds of aspersions, use profanity, uh, these uh, these sorts of things. And I do think that uh, Mr. Kuzmerichuk's. Uh, Emotion. I mean, I'm not suggesting he wrote these words himself. Uh, it's probably some uh, some poorly paid uh, uh, government staffer. But uh, but the the um, uh, but the, but the language in there is not in keeping with parliamentary rules and, and order. So uh, I I do uh, on the basis of the mandate of the committee chair as well as on the basis of uh, unparliamentary uh, language. Uh, I wonder if you could uh, just reflect on whether or not uh, this motion uh, is in order. Um, I am, I am, uh, you know, if, if it's in order, I, I, I welcome hearing uh, Mr. Kuzmerichuk's uh, uh, comments, uh, but, uh, pardon me? So maybe I can 